And this is the original expression. By taking the mb square out of this of, out of the square root, you can write this whole thing as positive mb. times the square root of alpha square plus two alpha cosine KL plus one sine KL and or double curvature one. The maximum is negative square root of ma square plus two ma and b cosine kl plus mb square over sine kl and this will lead to negative mb times this whole thing alpha square plus two alpha cosine KL plus one divided by sine KL. Now, once again, be careful with the definition of the, what we call the positive sine or negative sine. If we define this way, the sine of MB is considered positive or negative. Why does not it's double curvature? Sometimes students are confused. And think about this way. When you draw the moment diagram, remember, the positive one always goes on the top. That's for MA. What about for MB? The moment diagram goes under, right? So that is actually just the sign of MB. So that's negative. To use this to associate with this negative sign, you know this is double curvature. If it becomes the other way around, which means MA goes this, and B goes this. Now you know that for MA, of course, it's positive. Now for MB, it's also positive. Okay, so this positive sign is associated with this positive sign here. So you will not confuse. You will know that is single curvature. Okay, of course, it's complete definition. So what is alpha? Well, alpha is just MA divided by MB. It's just a ratio. What about K? What's KL? KL is the square root of P over EI times L, right? So this equation for maximum moment, you can use it to determine the maximum moment at any values of axial force. Because in this case, P doesn't have to be PE, P can be any values. That being said, if, if on the exams, you are provided with a value of P, you're provided the value of E and I, of course you're provided with the dimensions, the length, the span of the bean column, you should be able to calculate the numerical value of KL, correct? Mm -hmm. Right? So once you had the values of KL, if you also had the values of MA and MB, you should be able to determine the maximum moment, right? With, all, with these two equations, you should be able to do that. All you have to be careful here is do not use the wrong equation. And that's all. Okay. All right. And uh, so, now, we're going to connect this to something we use in design. Of course, I know I did not have, uh, I did not talk that much about design, but whenever I can make a connection with 
whatever you learn from steel structures, I would like to make that connection here. That's it's going to be our step six. Similar to what we did with the buckling of columns, if we can express the maximum moment in terms of some sort of coefficient, say, um, if we consider this, if we consider MA equals negative MB, if we do it this way, and that means our alpha is going to be minus one, which is less than zero. Right. So, what is this? What is the sign of this? Is it single curvature or negative or double curvature? When alpha is less than zero, it is single curvature. When it's greater than zero, it's double. That's another way to determine it. Now, if we make MA just equals to be negative MB. And the expression of the maximum moment actually can be written this way. Can be further simplified. Just plug in the one minus one for alpha. And this will become just, of course, this will just be MA times the square root of two, one minus cosine KL. Of the side KL. Now again, the value of KL depending depends on the value of your axial force P. So if you plug in the axial force P, then you can determine the numeric value of sine KL and cosine KL. K is just force dependent, P dependent. Now if you look at these two parts, we recognize that this is the expression that I before, I did not show you the whole thing. I said, there's just some expression. Now I'm giving you the expression. This is the expression what we call moment amplification because without the axial force, the maximum moment is gonna be one of the end moments. In this case, just one of them, just MA. But now you have the axial force. The second part in this expression, which you ever seen in the square bracket is what we call moment amplification. due to axial force, P. What happens when P becomes zero? Hmm. Mass equals zero. Maximum moment equals one of the moment at the ends. Mm hmm yes. So, and Suppose we do this and we're gonna let the maximum moment to be written as this. And oh actually we've been using M A and B, right? So why don't we just be constant be consistent? Also call this one use MB, because we've been using MB, because now it's M A equals MB, so you just stay with MB. So we can write this whole thing as the expression of this maximum moment as some as some function of MB. And as for the MB, we're gonna take the absolute sign. That will cover both single and double curvature cases. We're gonna say that this M MX is gonna be MB times a coefficient. And this coefficient is what we're gonna to use to evaluate the moment amplification effect. So how do we get expression of the CM? This is how I'm gonna show you here. So we're gonna write this to be MB, this absolute value, take absolute value of MB times the CM and on no coefficient times this thing. And that's the case when MA equals negative MB. We said this is gonna be like this, two, one minus cosine KL divided by sine KL. We want to say that this equals to absolute value of MB times something like this.
alpha square plus two alpha cosine KL plus one. So what is this? This is what we obtained from the second order derivative, y double prime, right? On the last page. So the way to figure out what is the expression of the CM is by writing it this way. And by knowing that this part must be equal to this part and we can get expression of CM. So because these two must be identical, therefore the expression of CM is just this the square root of alpha square plus two alpha cosine KL plus one divided by two times one minus cosine KL. It's pretty obvious, right? So what is this? This is one commonly used design parameter is what we call the equivalent moment factor. On the uh, steel design menus, you are provided with the values of the CM, usually just some empirical values, never really the theoretical expression, but this is a theoretical expression. And there's a section and dedicated to the different values of CM, because when it comes to design, you won't be able to really plug in all these sine cosine, you will just be provided with some values. So first, first of all, let's understand the physical meaning of this better. What does that mean? It basically means this. If we have a beam column like this, and it's subjected to two n moments, of course, it has to be connected. Yep. Two n moments. Suppose m a goes this way. Can anyone tell me what's the direction of m b in this case? Is it clockwise or counterclockwise? Remember we said MA equals minus negative MB. So the direction of MB should be... Counterclockwise. Very good. Right? Because we said this. And that's how we use these equations here. So by definition, this is how we define the equivalent moment factor here. And from here, you can also draw the moment diagram because one is here and the other here. And of course, assuming that MB is, is greater than, well, in this case, MB equals MA, that means it's gonna be like this, right? But because of the second order or the secondary moment effect, the actual moment diagram will look like this. 